So uh, anyway, I'll start over. So my name is Lika Erdoğan Orhan. I'm from Gazi University, Faculty of Pharmacy, Dean of the Faculty. I don't know, I think some of you are related to health science, right? Uh, I know there is one student from uh, pharmacy department. So uh, I hope you can enjoy my lecture. So uh, my specialty is um, actually pharmacognosy, uh, which can be described as drugs from natural sources. This could be from you know uh, any biological or natural sources, uh, just like uh, you know plants, animals, marine animals, even microorganisms uh, can be a, a research material for us. Uh, but not only pharmacists, of course, some other disciplines like um, chemists and even, you know, medical doctors, they also do this kind of research. So uh, I'm not going to talk about my own research, but uh, in a general uh, subject, uh, I, would, mm, I would like to just mention about some, uh, I mean, drug molecules or... Um, bioactive molecules coming from these sources, how they are or they have been developed into, you know, clinically available drugs. So I hope, I mean, it would get your interest. So um, when we talk about natural sources, actually we are talking about biodiversity. The sources that I just mentioned, uh, of course, they are also part of biodiversity. You can see it's, so we are talking about an immense source. Um, so, um, especially when you are looking for a bioactive compounds which could be developed into a clinical available drugs. Some of you are uh, already familiar with the subject, I know. So, um, this huge source um, can serve you, but it is, uh, in other words, it's something like, um, you know, trying to find a needle uh, you know, in a um, big pile, something like that. But of course, uh, it's also a very um, interesting area, and a lot of researchers and research groups in the world uh, are, you know, like looking for uh, new drug candidates from these sources. So, why uh, these natural sources are very important in search of discovering new drugs? Uh, because there's kind of statistic, as you can see here. All you can see here properly? Okay. So, um, of course, when you look into, you know, drug market, many of them are synthetic drugs, already synthesized organically. But uh, this, um, some portion of these drugs actually come from um, natural products. We call them as natural products. So, some of them are directly natural products already in clinic, um, but most of them, the molecules, drug molecules, actually are derived from natural products. I will give some examples. So, um, in, in this search, there is one thing also important, which is uh, traditional knowledge. So, you are coming from different countries, and I'm sure in, in your countries you have um, folk medicine. Uh, applications. So this is also important, but it is like, you know, uh, fishing in an ocean because the source is really big. There are too many species, marine species, plant species, um, animal species, etc. So uh, it is a very hard work actually. So especially, I mean, some diseases are really uh, in top level in many countries. So one of them is, you know, cancer. And there is still not, not um, very clear cure for treating types of cancers. So we are, I mean, as human beings, we are still looking for a very, very effective um, drug molecules to treat cancer. But in this sense, natural products are also quite important because um, they seem to be a very good source for anti-cancer drugs. Uh, for example, um, maybe uh, almost 75% of the um, current drugs, anti-cancer drugs, I mean, actually comes from um, natural products. 
and their derivatives. So in this uh, way, uh, searching natural products for anti-cancer purpose is also very important and critical, maybe we should say. Um, I will start with marine ecosystem, how marine species uh, actually serve uh, as a source for uh, bioactive natural uh, molecules or products. There are so many examples uh, because actually marine species are uh, considering the number uh, are greater than uh, plant species. Um, when we look into uh, marine species, especially sponges, marine sponges, you know, um, they are very productive uh, in terms of uh, having uh, bioactive molecules which can uh, be used to treat human diseases. So this is one of them, uh, a marine sponge called Tectitetia crypta. Um, this is a very simple sponge. Actually, sponges are animals, you know, they are not, because some people think that it is a kind of plant or something, but they are animals. Uh, it is like very simple uh, anatomy. They cannot walk, they cannot move. Uh, so uh, to defend themselves, they have to produce some metabolites to, to, to survive, you know, underwater in the ocean. So um, that's why they um, produce a very, very strong molecules. Um, like this one. So, um, for example, there is a compound called cytorabine. Uh, this, is a, uh, this compound has anti-cancer uh, property. So, uh, this is the first marine-derived anti-cancer molecule uh, in this, uh, I mean, against this disease, I can say. So, marine biodiversity is very uh, important. Uh, and in this table, maybe it's a little bit small, I don't know if you can see it properly, but there are many organisms that can produce those metabolites from uh, different parts of the uh, world, I mean different oceans like Caribbean Sea, Indian Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, Sea of Japan or something like that. So any part of the world, uh, uh, the oceans have this kind of um, I mean, sponges or other marine species that can, you know, just make uh, these strong molecules. This is another one. Uh, so, so far, how do you feel? I don't know if it is uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so, um, this is uh, another compound that I would like to mention, which is called Didamnin B. Uh, it is uh, obtained from a tunicate species, actually. So, this is 3 Didamnum solidum. Um, this compound has been uh, discovered as a very strong agent, anti-cancer agent, but of course, uh, if it is a drug discovery process, uh, not only bioactivity, but also toxicity is very important because it may cure a part of the body, but on the other hand, it may, you know, um, poison or make even worse the other part of the body. So this is the balance of benefit and damage to the body. So this is how drugs actually can work. So, um, but when you look into this very strong anti-cancer agent, um, the researchers just saw that it has some very severe level of neuromuscular and cardiovascular toxicities. So uh, they just gave up uh, the clinical trials because uh, there is no end for that because it, it, really, it is very, very toxic to human. Um, this is a risk in drug research. Uh, this is why drug, uh, I mean, finding an original molecule is so uh, um, hard, uh, time t consuming, uh, also very costly uh, because you can just invest millions or sometimes billions of dollars into R&D of a molecule, then in the end you can uh, just, you know, end up with a very toxic molecule in some stages like phase two, phase three, and you just have to, you know, stop there and your money is gone. Uh, that's why it is important. Um, okay, 
This is another derivative of this compound called aplidin. Uh, this is um, from another tunicate, aplidium albicans, uh, who lives in Mediterranean Sea. Um, but you know, uh, yes, very good anti-cancer activity with this compound. Um, you know, um, and good thing about this compound, this derivative actually, no neuromuscular toxicity, uh, and it has a good advantage uh, of preventing cancer, uh, especially against um, some solid uh, cancer types. This uh, solid uh, cancers, you know, they are more aggressive, much more difficult to treat. So it is very promising, uh, we can say. Uh, yeah, from this uh, aplidin, actually, there is another compound or derivative or a modified derivative called uh, pilitidepsin. Uh, and it is also used as second-line therapy now in cancer patients, especially with malignant melanoma. Um, I will mention about that a little bit later, but this is another marine species called Dolabella. Uh, so um, this one also produces anti-cancer compound, uh, a series of compounds actually called dolastatins. Uh, not all of them, but some uh, particular, especially number 10 in this series, have very promising anti-cancer uh, activity. Um, this is, uh, this Dolabella actually, um, um, they are from a marine species group called um, uh, sea skirts or tunicates, as I just mentioned. Uh, the problem here, yes, you find a very, very active molecule, very promising, maybe very less toxicity, but the source, since it is um, living organisms actually, it is very small, and you need tons of these uh, organisms to get maybe a few milligrams of this compound. So uh, when you happen to find such a molecule, then you also need to look for total synthesis of this kind of compounds, which is not easy at all, and which might be also very costly. So what I'm telling, uh, I mean, mentioning c skirt, these are like very small. You can see they can just move around, uh, not really by themselves. Uh, but anyway, this kind of uh, marine species or sea skirts, because just like a skirts, you know, it just goes around. Uh, they, although they look very simple, they can produce a very nice molecules, which can be very active. So this is another marine species that I would like to mention. It is Bugularne retina. Um, you can see it looks like a kind of algae or kind of plant, but it is not a plant. Actually, it is a very, very um, uh, primitive, simple animal species and very hard to actually see by uh, just snaked eye. Uh, so this marine uh, bryozem, um, it produces a series of compounds, again, which are called uh, bryostatins. And among them, this number one, bryostatin one, uh, in a lactone structure, uh, has a very good activity against some cancer types and by some molecular mechanisms actually it has been shown and very promising as well. Uh, but the same problem against happens that this, um, uh, this is a very, very simple and very small animal and um, but it, since it produces such a valuable compound, uh, what they do, especially in the United States, they do aquaculturing of these species to get, you know, or to produce tons of it to get a few milligram of this compound, which is a very, very expensive procedure anyway. This is another one. Uh, this is an, uh, a marine 
microorganism species actually. It's called cyanobacterium, chromobacterium violaceum. So it looks uh, like purple color. That's why it gets the species name after it. Um, so many molecular mechanisms. Um, so I don't know how many of you are <laughs> familiar with this kind of, you know, uh, information or uh, background. So I'm not going into details. But anyway, uh, this compound uh, in a depth pep peptide structure, uh, it was able to proceed to phase two clinical trials. Uh, it is very promising uh, and having uh, you know, uh, a compound in phase two clinical trial, of course, means a lot. Uh, so it is still being tested. And these clinical trials are actually going on uh, or conducted by NIH in US. So maybe in near future, it may become a promising molecule for cancer. So um, Another maybe very striking example of this natural products that I would like to mention is um, acyclovir. Uh, probably you know the um, drug called Zovirax. Have you ever used it? You probably know. I mean, I'm sure you know, but I don't know the others. Especially when you have a, a herpes. Uh, it's, yes, yes. Yes, you know, you know it? So there's very famous medicine called Zovirax. Yes, it's like world might. So uh, the medicine that you use for your herpes is actually originated from a sea sponge. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about the story of acyclovir or acyclovir. So um, one day, these two guys, Bergman and Fönny, just went to seaside to swim uh, in Florida around, you know, 1945. So they were just, you know, swimming around. And then they, you know, just came to see a marine sponge called, I was talking about a little bit while ago, uh, Cryptothetia crypta in Caribbean Sea, by the way. So they said that, okay, let's collect some of these marine sponges and take the laboratory because they were biologists anyway. So, um, so this swimming actually uh, led to a discovery. Maybe it was the first step for discovery of an, uh, an active drug molecule. So they said, okay, let's take it back to laboratory and let's investigate it. So they got two types of molecules, as you can see there. So they were like, Structurally, they are uh, not very complex. Okay, they are uh, simple. So they isolated these two compounds from this sponge. So uh, they saw that there is a common uh, part, a chemical part in, this, in these two molecules. Okay, so they said, let's go further. What we can see with this arabinose sh sh sugar uh, rings. So they uh, actually, starting from these two uh, parent uh, nucleosides isolated from this marine sponge. Uh, so they proceeded more and um, prepared the derivatives, which I just mentioned, that cytorabine and another one, azidotimidine. Two drug molecules they obtained in the end of this search uh, when they started to swim. And in the end, they, uh, you know, uh, they got these two molecules. Uh, cytorabine, uh, as I just mentioned, is a, has become an anti-cancer agent, uh, while the other one, azitotimidine, has become anti-HIV agent, actually. So, um, but the research didn't stop there, actually. Uh, they just, uh, not on, only them, of course, the big research group, so they, you know, uh, just uh, continued on this research, and uh, they um, found another, I mean, developed another derivative called vidarabin. Um, but there was also um, an interesting story uh, in this uh, history, I could say. Uh, in their research group, uh, two more researchers also joined, Schaffer and Gertrude Allian. So what is special about Gert Gertrude Allian? She is, I mean, uh, Gertrude Allian, 
was a female researchers in the US. They were doing all this job in the lab. So in those years, actually, even in the US, it wasn't very easy for a female researchers to join a research group to do research. It was the um, maybe Second War, World War years, and uh, there was big, you know, economic uh, problems going on in the U.S. and it wasn't very welcomed for females, uh, um, you know, re women researchers to go to university, to have PhD degree, whatever, whatever. So, uh, but this lady, Gertrude Allen, uh, she, um, her father, I think, uh, she, he was a dentist and he always wanted her daughter to become a researcher or something at the university. So she decided to go further, but um, none of the deans at the chemistry faculty, pharmacy faculty, whatever. They didn't accept because she was a woman. Uh, but she didn't give up. Since it was World War II times, there was no man around. They were just fighting overseas. So of course, many sectors needed women in the US. So that's why she was able to join this research group. So there was a kind of uh, interesting story behind that. So she actually, uh, worked in discovery of a cycloid. Anyway, the nice end of the story was uh, she also contributed discovery of a cycloid, which is uh, also called Zovirax. So that was her. And Gertrude Elliot actually got a Nobel Prize in 1998, one of a very few women who got. Nobel Prize. So behind actually discovery of Asaklovir, there was this interesting story that I would like to share with you. Because I also see a lot of females here, <laughs> which is good. So uh, this is the marine sponge uh, in another picture that produces the parent compound of Asaklovir. Uh, and of course, not only Asaklovir, there was to other anti-HIV and anti-cancer agents coming from this sponge. Uh, so uh, with this story, actually, this has become a very popular anti-herpes drug. OK, there is another one uh, that also I would like to tell a little bit uh, about its story. It is uh, the parent compound, actually, is conotoxin. Uh, the and or final compound is actually zyconotid. Have you ever heard about this compound? Any of you? I don't know, maybe there are two of you might. Anyway, so uh, probably you are wondering uh, where they came from, I mean, from which organism they are isolated. Actually, they were isolated from this seashell, which is called consmagus. And there's also a synonym name for that, but I will mention about that later. So um, this is an animal species, but marine animal species. It's, um, it's venom, actually, very important because it has this uh, very um, complex structure. This is too big to be uh, a drug molecule, uh, which is not very usual, I mean. So who was the discoverer? Actually, the discoverer was Baldamora Oliveira. Uh, he, he was originally from Philippines, but he was studying and doing his career in the US uh, at the University of California. So uh, that time, he had a, P a master's student, not PhD, master's student. Um, so in his master's student thesis, actually, they found or isolated this compound and they developed into this one, uh, which is the final compound, zyconotid. So um, this was the master student, Michael McIntosh. So the, the, he was having his master's studies at University of Utah. So you can see him with the shells in his hand. Uh, so they got this compound and it was developed into a clinical, a clinically available uh, drug molecule. Uh, now it is um, available in US and I think in many other countries under the trade name of Priot, 
very potent analgesic molecule uh, and a drug company called Elan Pharmaceuticals uh, licensed it and it got FDA approval in 2004 and uh, when you look its effect and when you compare it with morphine it is like 50 times more potent so during a master thesis actually <laughs> you can find a drug molecule maybe by coincidence but so it is not a miracle sometimes it may happen so this is also another interesting story So this is the shell in the little movie you can see. Uh, it has kind of mouth. Uh, this is how it survives. I mean, it has a kind of mouth, uh, you know, just sucks the fish and other, uh, you know, organisms just moving around or swimming around and it digests it. But since it is not very movable animal uh, itself, so it has to produce very uh, toxic molecules to defend, you know, its cells. That's why they produce. This is also a closer look to this uh, shell. And this is another movie how, you know, uh, you can see how it sucks a fish and just digests. So anyway, I mean, marine ecosystem is uh, very colorful and very challenging. Uh, there are so many more examples, but they were maybe the last two was the most striking ones. Um, so many molecules isolated from this uh, marine species, either sponge or you know algae, tunicate, whatever. So they are like very uh, effective in, for example, these ones uh, are in phase two clinical trials against different diseases like. Uh, you know, cancer, uh, mostly cancer actually. And uh, like here you can see again wound healing and cancer, more examples in phase two clinical trials and phase one clinical trials, for example, uh, again anti cancer. Uh, these are not drugs but just candidates. And some more examples. Uh, but this one. Uh, on your right, Yondelis, uh, I just mentioned, uh, in other words, it's called trabectidin. It, it is commercialized now. It is a clinically available uh, anti-cancer agent. So um, this is also the same compound that I was talking, trabectidin. Uh,